Howdy, howdy, folks. Welcome back to Hoot and a Half. And before we get to this episode with Brooke and Connor, we have a special message. Our Patreon has been live for about a week now, and we have been loving all the comments and the likes and the messages. So if you're not a member of the Patreon, sign up. This Brooke and Connor episode is already on there. So if you're a member of the Patreon, got early access. There's bonus episodes on there. Uh, the link will be in the description. Just wanted to give a quick reminder that our Patreon is now live. So go check that out. And without further ado, Here's Brooke and Connor. Howdy, howdy, folks. Welcome back to Hoot and a Half. I'm your host, Matt King, joined with my co-host, Mike Shepard. Today, we are joined with Brooke and Connor. Brooke Averick, Connor Wood. You may know them from Brooke and Connor. Make a podcast under the TMG Studio Network. Guys, I love you. I was love having you. you on. Thank you for having us. Um, I have a whole bunch of questions for you today, but you know, love it. we're just going to start casual. Connor, thank you so much for bringing me um, us ice cream. These are incredible, and they're good for you. Uh, that's a stretch. No, good it's not. Good no, thing. they're plant-based. I did, okay, there's a difference between being good no, for you I, and being not bad for you. No, I don't agree. You think that there's vitamins and minerals I'm, and nutrients in I here? I do. Thing, the inside. Look at the inside. Oh, what's going on over there? Wait. It says coconut milk. Coconut milk for you. Oh, are they vegan? Chocolate. Mm -hmm. Coconut oil. Organic. Coconut sugar. It is good for it's you. It's good for you. Well, hold on. Guys. It's just it's not healthy. bad for you. It's healthier ingredients. It's healthier than regular ice cream, but this is not it's a substitute for a salad. Okay, but it, no, no, no. But it's no, only five grams of sugar. for you, but this is still good. It's only five grams of sugar in a whole serving, which like, I feel like you drink a Diet Coke and it's like 27 grams of sugar. I'd rather have... Well, is it Diet Coke the whole point there's no sugar? No, that's zero. Coke Zero. There's sugar in Diet Coke? Yeah. No, yeah, I think... Just no calories? Hold oh. on. No. <laughs> there is no sugar in Diet Coke. Yeah, Diet Coke has know. no sugar, but it has calories. Coke, Coke Zero is zero calories. But tastes like Coke. Yeah, because Diet Coke has its own aspartame flavor. I think Coke Zero is no calories, no sugar. Diet Coke is just no sugar, but has calories and it's Coke taste. Coca-Cola. Coke Zero has no calories hey, hey, and no sugar. Connor has the information... Okay, uh, it's it's a it's a nuanced answer. I have to say, <laughs> um, none. There's no sugar. Coca Cola it European workers use a blend of low calorie sweeteners to give Diet Coke its great taste without sugar. But that's not to say that there's no additives. Because so there's additives. So Diet Coke, no sugar. No sugar. No sugar. But calories. No calories. Hold the phone. Or is it like ten or fifty calories? I'm gonna say I'm gonna say Diet Coke has calories and Coke Zero has no calories, which I don't understand how you have a drink with no calories. Both don't uh, both don't have calories. No, there's no way. There's just true. different flavors. Less, Diet Coke contains less than one calorie. Whoa! So no calories in Diet Coke oh. either. That's why it's diet. So is it just about the flavors? Yes. That's the only thing. Zero and diet. Because some people. We're like, I want a zero calorie Coke. I just don't like the taste of Diet Coke. So they went to the lab and said, let's make a like, calorie free Coke that tastes just like Coke. Yeah. And that's well, Coke Zero? Yes. The thing is, the legalities behind a nutrition label just says you have to include this, 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 and this. But if you have something like a non sugar additive, like aspartame, it can still be as bad or worse than sugar yes but they don't require you to include that on a label so, right yeah mm. as as it is okay yeah yeah but back to the dream pops yeah so they're dank and i'm not seeing sugar either in the oh, five chocolate grams. five grams of sugar. okay yeah gluten-free plant-based 100 calories five grams of sugar simple ingredients Better, better sorry ingredients better well. ingredients better pizza Papa John's. 70 calories for just like the whole box that's not bad no remember, it's good do you guys remember dipping dots when they came out uh -huh. yeah. Yeah. yeah i could swim in a pool of dipping dots <laughs> ice cream of the future <laughs> what was your favorite flavor of dipping dots just plain cookies vanilla and cream oh cookies and cream was good oh my i like the server yeah like the rainbow no. one. but oh i was my like god did it taste i remember now like i'm thinking back i feel like it didn't taste that good no, it is. I just had it at the zoo, the San Diego Zoo. I went on the, it's just I went on the Santa Monica beer and got it, too. They're just By as the way, good as I remember. Prices have not gone down for Dippin' Dots. Only up. Only up because it's Dyshare in the future. <laughs> but the thing is, I remember arguing with my parents, and it was like a big treat for us when we would go, because it was like $11 for like a... Because there was never like a Dippin' Dots parlor. No, right? Always at it was some... always at like touristy things or something like <laughs> yeah. to catch you. Like, like, a, like the boardwalk. Anyway. Yeah. yeah. Please feel free to upcharge me. I'm paying whatever. <laughs> oh, well, they were $8 those. on the pier. And I remember being like, 
You know, it's not an ice. It's not a sauce or ice cream where it's a dollar. And you're like, I'm gonna have two bites anyways, and then toss it. But I just like want to get that. I'm like, oh, I gotta finish this whole bowl. But then it would nice and melt, and then you'd have like a little oh slurpy. But it tastes good. good. Like you think that's better than like a Tillamook or a Ben I Jerry's? Think it's, it's fun to have a bunch it's of fun. little it's bowls. It's fun. Like, I know it's more fun, but like taste wise, I kind of I haven't had it since I was probably 13. I think. I seriously think you it, can't it's, separate the fun from the taste. Oh, uh, okay. <laughs> no, it does. It, kinda, like, it blends together. Yeah, exactly. I think that okay. it's the same um, energy as like people love Chick fil A ice. Okay. Right? Because yeah, it's yeah. like, I mean, is there a science behind small balls <laughs> of things that are, are like they feel good so they end up tasting yeah, better? Yeah, boba. We would love a small ball. In- yeah, boba. Uh, yeah. Uh, what do you eat before edamame? Yeah. Oh, Guys, I think that we are seriously on to something because <laughs> phallic foods also are some of the best foods. Bananas, Bananas rocket pops, ha, uh, oh, uh, ha, uh, corn dogs, string cheese. Oh, string oh my god, cheese. I hate phallic Rolls. foods. Now that you're saying it, you oh, don't like string cheese. Uh, uh-uh. I only like the um, polio like twist cheddar white oh, one. Where just, string like, cheese only tastes good to me like what, when once, once it's peeled, it's yeah. strong. Yes. like people who eat string cheese like at a full on bite. You're dangerous. No, that, like, I agree. There's okay. no, let me ask you this. Would you eat eight to ten pieces of string cheese in like one the, sitting? Like I know eight, I know where eight this to is. Ten individual the full ones? shaft? Yeah, a full shaft. Like no. eight to ten in one sitting. I could do two max. What if I deep fried them and gave you some marinara sauce Ooh. with them? Because that's what... I, I could it. definitely... Definitely see myself with six. That <laughs> ruined mozzarella sticks like, like or no. when I thought about that they were just like... They're just string cheese but just deep fried it's that deep fried string crazy. cheese and you'll eat nine ten of those yeah, no problem that's scary and that's not being talked about enough <laughs> <laughs> that's a good point we have to cover the real story raise here. more awareness like the new york times need it needs to i'll put in a call cover it do you guys want to know something insane that i just remembered that like bring, brings me a, a little bit of a smile to my oh, face yeah. um the way i used to eat string cheese and i couldn't eat it otherwise is if i would peel do the entire stock and as strung and then into all the almost to the bottom and have a little stick going yes, and like I would go oh, 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 and then I, I would rip them all on the yeah. like, broken <laughs> right <laughs> before I stopped <laughs> that too. oh because it, it tasted better yeah. in smaller pieces it and does. I did you get chocolate on your pants yeah <laughs> yeah it's okay uh I feel like I've done that once Oh my god! You used to, that was like your routine for doing this. Couldn't stop once I started. Like I couldn't actually eat. Like like Matt was saying, just he couldn't eat it without being peeled. Like I couldn't eat it unless it was in a hula skirt. Uh, do you do you do a little dance with it before you eat I it? Did. Like I a little spin hula? it, kind of like a Disney princess. Oh yeah, yeah that's great. Yeah, string Trump cheese. Does. String cheese. Speaking of nostalgic foods, do you remember that pack of carrots and ranch with like I think it was Bugs Bunny on it. Go on. <laughs> Brooke will not stop bringing this up. She talked, no one she it. talked about it on our podcast too, and I was like, I've never heard of that. And it we, was like, we, we looked it you're up. talking about like the typical, like, you know, the crackers and cheese thing where the cheese But it was at carrots the end, and like, ranch. You, you pull up those little piece of plastic. I've never found ranch like it or carrots like it because the carrots are like soaking oh, wet. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The ranch is like something like crack in it and they just don't make it anymore and it's the perfect healthy snack is there a photo of this somewhere like was it hidden is it hidden valley like was it like a hidden valley no. collab with looney tunes or did looney tunes have their own like let me kind ranch. of talk about something else while probably I it's a six flag. i bet it's a, did, did you live near a six flags no oh. i live near i feel like that would have been like a six funny. flag snack Can't i could see it or like what is that called the what do they do Space Jam at? Oh my God, here it is. Where do they do Space Jam? Did they just have like a big Space Jam event? And cool was... Cuts. Yes. Never heard of this. Yeah. Cool Cuts. The that's it's a, blurry, that's the... but are you kind of seeing what I mean? I no cool one else ate a... these. No. Cool Cuts was oh a place where you. Could... I you know we could have these. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. Put it up on the screen. Yeah, I can. Okay, here's a question: Baby carrots, are they small carrots just grown as little baby oh, carrots, oh or? Are they bigger carrots that are like just shaved down to the size of mini carrots? Wait, is this it? This is not common knowledge, is it? Do you uh, know the answer? I, I know the answer, but I had to look this up because I carrots truly... grow on a root, right? Well, carrots actually grow underground. They and that, on they're a not root. performed. Yeah, but underground. Yes, <laughs> correct. Pull them up. So, but wait, well, it depends it, how the root goes. Because, like, you know, we draw yeah. like how a carrot just goes up and it's there. But do carrots, can carrots branch out into a bunch of carrots? Can I think you pull so. one thing out, a bunch of different that's carrots. How you, that's how you harvest them. I it's think a bunch baby of carrots. carrots come from a cluster of a root. 
but they're like the mini ones. Or are they just fucking carrots shaved down into little? No, I think sh- they are. They come. They're born that way. They're made. So that you can go and buy. You can go to like a farm and get a bunch of little carrots. Yeah. Connor, what's your what's your bet? Um, like I, I, I really, in my heart of hearts, want to believe that we're not shaving large carrots down into several small ones. We're not, because you couldn't get that the casing on the outside if you were shaving it down. You know those sticks where that you get with wings; those are shaved down. Yeah. Baby carrots. There's a. Well, I, just, I really want to believe. There's a casing on them that means they're born that way. Well, well my 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 faith in humanity wants me to believe that we're not wasting time shaving large carrots down to small ones. But what about baby tomatoes? Those are just like those are those, shaved those, down. Those aren't shaved down. No, I know they're not shaved down. <laughs> down the casing. But, but but are those just how they're grown, or yes. it, are we catching them before they like? That's get how they're grown. Oh. Ch- that's a. Oh, are they tomato veal? It's <laughs> it its own species. Grape tomato, cherry tomato. Yeah. It's its own. Why are there baby eggplants, though? I like, think there might be. But you're talking about baby bite size eggplants. Oh, no. I think, I've never I think seen that. Matt life. wants some small eggplant representation. <laughs> Why does it not exist? You know the answer. I hate to be the purveyor of bad news. Shave. Shave. There was a period where grocery stores started to care about their aesthetics a lot more. And they noticed that uglier carrots were not getting sold. And there was a guy who said, well, instead of throwing away these ugly carrots, let's shave them down and repackage them as baby carrots. So they are the ugly carrots that are too ugly for the shelf get repurposed into baby carrots. We were fucking lying. <laughs> I know. You're lying isn't to that, me. Is, Hold me back so I don't attack Mike. <laughs> that is really fast. Isn't no. That devastating? Yeah. Oh, no. Oh, no. But it, it, here's where I think it's a good thing is because those carrots would otherwise go to waste because there's, they're too ugly. And now there's even ugly fruit sections at the grocery store where it's like a little bit cheaper if you get like yeah. a looking potato. It all tastes the same, right. but we're, you know, in a society of damn uh what's the word no one's safe we're a very Beauty. vain society yeah. very curated society yeah. yeah so no ugly carrots but shaped down the carrots like put to waste though right the what like they're not shaving down a whole carrot <laughs> no so no i think they're they're probably carrot. getting their money's worth out of it i'm they, sure yeah, they've they, optimized i always get ads i'm i guess i'm a part of the problem because i always get ads for uh this this company called Imperfect Foods. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I fucking hate it. Really? And I'm like, get that ugly ass deformed <laughs> lemon off of my screen. Oh my God, I would purposely buy it because it's ugly. I know. Because I feel for, sad that no one's I it. I feel like this guttural recoil when I see these ads on my Instagram. I'm like, I don't want I don't want that. I like the idea. I think it's cute, but I think it would be really embarrassing to like, I'm not buy from, from Portland. It. So I don't need an ugly lemon. You know, like I'm good with my perfect GMO lemon. Yeah, you don't feeling want great. People to like come to your house and you just have ugly fruit on your yeah. account. And you're like, yo, can we reset you like no. You don't see any architectural digest interviews with Emma Chamberlain. She's got a bowl of ugly lemons. <laughs> like they're all perfect and they're round. It's a good concept in theory, but not for us Hollywood types, am I right, guys? I would get the ugly uh, ones if I went food shopping and ate vegetables and fruits. I would get the ugly ones. Yeah, I, just, sure. I don't. The moment I like put it in my fridge, I just never want to touch it after it's in my fridge. Like I have to have like the fruit or the vegetable like the day of. Whoa, mm-hmm. really? Just, I think just like vegetables sometimes after they've like been in your refrigerator for more than two days, I don't want to touch them. I think the thing is that there's water in the container. That means that they're going bad. That oh, you like, gotta don't you gotta drain the water day of. I don't. I've never learned how to store fruits or vegetables, so you might have oh, more I'm info on this than me. Fruit vegetable store. What, what are you talking about? Draining the water? Wait. Like it, like a bag of baby carrots, for instance, always has about a <laughs> half <laughs> gallon of water <laughs> in in the bag. So first day when I open them, I dump the water out, wrap them, put them back in. I had no idea. I mean, I don't know if that's standard practice, but that's what I do. No, that's like definitely good right ways to store your vegetables that I'm not aware of, like. For example, drying your vegetables and then putting them like, I think you're supposed to put, also like you store them upside down so that the moisture falls, but then re, what what do you call it, evaporates up and then rains back down on the fruit. So you kind of like building a little ecosystem in the fridge. Well, that's spinach specifically. Like I know that you take, even if it says triple wash, like my mom's always like washing. I'm like, it's triple wash. It's fine. (laughs) But I put a paper towel folded in half in with that, the plastic casing because it absorbs a lot and then you take it out the end of the day throw it away put a new one in and then all of that stuff that like makes spinach go bad really fast is like removed i think it's just moisture but i don't know would you would you ever have a garden like do you see yourself gardening in uh, later in your life or no <laughs> neither do i i used to have a garden in brooklyn oh yeah would we you made grow? a little garden on our deck wow it was really nice wow. we had cilantro that turned into coriander a couple little tomatoes a little bit of peppers 
it's unbelievable how little pizza food garden. You can, yeah, for how <laughs> pizza garden in Brooklyn. <laughs> yeah, it it you have to get it takes so it takes like ninety days to get one right. effort. Right. I don't know how we have any food. It's unbelievable. <laughs> We're uh, feeding hundreds of millions of people a day, and it takes 90 days to grow a single pepper. Well, that just goes to show you, like, how many chemicals and yeah. uh, genetically modified things we're probably using. Yeah, but it's... Yeah. You know? Yeah. No, I agree, but give them to me. I don't care. Yeah. No. I almost bought wildflower seeds last night on Amazon, because have you seen those, like, guys who, like run around town and they have like wildflower oh. seeds and they like sprinkle them like in like uh public spaces so just natural flowers Never grow oh you haven't brooke i've seen that like... on the internet or in real life on the internet on the internet oh well yeah i've never seen it in real life but i think there's like little initiatives happening all around you know they do that in texas what like you know how all of the like that? what it's uh the blue bonnets and the indian paint brushes and that all of the like those are all like planted by the, the state okay like yeah they like oh. drive the trucks and it just like tosses them out as they drive oh they're doing that yeah oh i just thought it just okay. happened well, not, naturally because like think about where the seeds are they're right next to the street it's oh. where everyone's parking their car to get out to take blue bonnet photos so it's like a fun thing to do whenever you're just out and about you have a little salt shaker full of seeds and you just sprinkle them down in like a uh just a ugly looking area just to bring a little beauty into it but i think you're supposed to make sure that you buy the local native yeah seeds you know otherwise you can cause is that how planting flowers works yeah just seeds in the ground but don't you have to kind of bury them a little bit i think nature kind of does the work okay if it's raining yeah Yeah. i guess if it's dry out like if you're in a dry area like arizona you probably have to bury them and water it Uh uh-huh but like if you threw them out today it'd already be muddy and then it would rain again or wind or whatever and then it would brooke did you play the sims uh-uh, no. You weren't a Sims girl? No, just primarily Club Penguin. Oh. Yeah. Uh, apparently Sims 4 is free now, so I'm thinking about starting a Sims. I don't, like, I would even know where to begin with Sims. Like, I have no you idea. You love it. That's I know, and that I would. be obsessed with. I, I used to love the Sims. You should get a gaming PC, like, just for Sims. I love gaming. You know, like, now the Sims, they upload, uh, like, how do I say this? People can, like, upload their builds and their characters and everything. And I'm pretty sure if you just go on The Sims and search Brooke and Connor, someone has already made you on The Sims. I'm and, like, Bobby has made your set and everything. It's pretty wild. They're probably making you kill it. So could you just, like, live out an alternate yeah, that's life? Yeah. Oh, kind of that awesome. I can't get on that. I think someone <laughs> has already made... On. I know. <laughs> like, David, like, well, you know, when David was walking, someone had, like, made his house and had all wow. of us already in it. Wow. And it was, like, pretty wild. And Whoa, it's that's crazy. And it's interesting seeing, like, how people know the floor plan of your house, but what they have right. wrong at the same time. Oh, that's cool. What, what yeah. they would have for the set. Yeah. Where the cameras are. and Yeah, or they, where they think a bathroom is and stuff. It's all just from what they can uh, uh, tell from different clips from the vlogs and stuff but i don't know i've been i've been thinking about playing the sims a lot lately if you do let me know i will well no we'll, how, we'll, we'll never <laughs> ever hear the end date if we start playing the sims. who would you okay i had you'd make it into the studio I, i'm scared but if you had to create like your own sims life and like your own like companion like who do you think you would I like i can't even get into it i'd be locked up on would site. you make a dream man or would you make a celebrity like that you're living well, with? you get to pick a husband they'd be both they'd be both okay i know but i know that you have like your rankings and like the yeah. top uh, yeah. men that you're interested in your life or i just don't know if you were given the opportunity to create your fantasy it's all, world from Matt, it's, from all, scratch. it's all up here <laughs> her fantasy world is <laughs> happening it, as it, we speak yeah it i would just have to simply just translate it to html yeah. if that's how if that's how it works as a woman but in STEM. me and andrew garfield me and andrew garfield would be living in the in the palisades and so i Andrew garfield is who your man would be he asked, yes right now like yes. in the sand you wouldn't do matthew gray goobler nathan fielder like who are you gonna no be it's, it's andrew right now in yeah okay. or it would be like uh uh What's that TV show, Big Love, about that, like, the Mormon dad who has, like, the three separate houses, but he has oh, all different wives, wives, but the backyard's connected, so he just, like... I'm pretty, like, monogamous in my head. Oh, you wouldn't do a no. Mormon-esque Nathan Fielder Monday through Friday, and then no. a Saturday and a Like, Sunday. sometimes, like, if I need to have two people in it, like, something tragic will happen to person number one in order for me to move on to person number two, but oh, it's never, like... You can do all of that on the Sims. Yes, and yeah. Garfield can drown in the pool. No, no, he wouldn't be the one to uh, go, okay. but... Yeah, that's, that's, yeah, is, is I'm monogamous. He, is he Jewish? Andrew Path, Kansas? yeah. Nice. Let's go, baby. Are the other half British? <laughs> yes. <laughs> Religion, works. British, yes. British. No, the British part is Jewish. Oh, hell yeah. I didn't even know. Wait, no, no, no. Jewish people are British. No, I'm wrong. I had an allergy attack last night in my bed. 
And What's an al? What is an allergy attack? My eyes just like they started itching for a second, and then started itching. And then I went in the bathroom, and they had both like swollen complete, like almost fully to shut. And I was like, "What the hell?" And I just realized I didn't have laundry detergent because my roommate had used mine, and then like the end of it. And then so I used someone else's that was there, and I'd never heard of it. And I think it must have been the laundry detergent uh... that I used on my sheets because it was my first time. Like I did my sheets over the weekend. Right. I just put them on. That happened last night. My guinea pig's allergic to eye detergent. Oh, that's a damn shit. So sad. Do you get seasonal allergies? Yeah, I do. Not anymore. I got them all the time when I was younger. You grew yeah. out of them? Mm hmm. Oh, that's know. so I nice. I grow out. Of Mine them. are not as bad here as they were. Same. On the East, East Coast, it's just like insane. Hospitalize me. <laughs> I feel like, is it worse on the west side of like LA? People get allergies worse over there? I don't know. I thought like you wouldn't. I think I've heard that. I don't oh, know. I why. think like I thought like the breeze, like the, the air circulating, know, like sense. shit around. Like, I like a feel bit more. when when I think my body just knows it's like March, right? And it's around South by time. My body starts to like be a little bit more mm -hmm. cognitive. Did people, did people always have allergies? I don't know. It's They're, like pollen. Why have we evolved to have allergies? It seems counterproductive. Well, there was this I one. Agree, bro. There was this Thanks. one take on TikTok, which <laughs> I think has since been disproven. But the idea is that. The patriarchy, of course. We, when we created yes. like the landscape of America, they there's a difference between male and female trees, and we planted a ton of male trees and not enough female trees. And what happens? The reason why there's so much pollen and more than there should be, and why we get allergies, is because the male trees are fur over not yeah, thought. exactly of course. The female Nothing trees. season. <laughs> but that I think makes that's sense. Been, I think it's been disproven. It's just like uh, completely well, false. I think no the, male and female trees. The pioneers probably their priority wasn't to like misogynize the plant life yeah, was I, it i don't maybe think like so. how do you look at a scene and be like just see it as a dick subconsciously <laughs> i don't think that's it it's this seed has a maybe huge it has, cock has and mouth planet <laughs> <laughs> and that's it's, energy yeah okay, that's a I real it's, thing it's the pollinating okay, it's the pollinating pattern everything yeah apparently everything has female i don't think they're taking male. it from one Right, one male tree to taking it to a female tree, yeah, right? I, but then I think I think another like actual tree person came out and was like, "There's no such thing as male and female trees." This is the <laughs> dumbest thing I've ever. You're thinking of an ar arbor, 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 arbor. I feel like in Judaism there is. Am I wrong? There, there might be. There, we do have an arbor day in Judaism. It's called Tu I know. Wait, wait Tu Matt. And oh. there's a Jewish holiday. <laughs> yeah, keep up, Matt. It's like a tree day. Yeah, uh -huh. it's, it's the holiday. It's the new year for all the plants. Can you explain Purim to me? Brooke, take it away. It came up on my, <laughs> and Mike, you know, I got this one. I'm interested in Judaism. I saw this guy going around handing kids like dollar bills, and a lot of them are dressed in like costumes and like clown it's outfits. Just Halloween it's, is my understanding. And but, for what? But you wouldn't celebrate actual Halloween. If you're oh. Jewish, because it's like satanic. Day of the they, they pass out flyers in my Jewish school saying like, don't let your kid dress really? up for Halloween because it's a pagan holiday uh -uh. and we're Jews and this is like really bad. But what is the significance of the holiday? Yeah, like in, the, is, is, uh, in, in, in celebrating in, harvest? Or, no, uh, no, no. You get is, drunk. Um, oh, oh. Man of Shevitz. There was, <laughs> there was in the land of Persia, the Persian Empire, there was a king. And the king married this Jewish girl because she was the hottest girl. Totally. And uh, Esther. Esther. There you go. And the there was this other guy who was just anti-Semitic, you know, as it goes. Mm -hmm. And he was also like part of the royal kingdom. And he's walking down the street and he's expecting everyone to bow down to him in the street. But there's one Jew who doesn't bow down because he's Mordecai. like, we don't bow down to other people. We only bow down to God. <laughs> what did you say? Isn't it Mordecai? Mordecai. See, she ah, goes. I'm pretty good. I'm pretty good. <laughs> You'll fill in the characters. Yeah. So Mordecai is just a gangster Jew and he's like, I'm not bowing down mm -hmm. to another man. I only bow down to exactly. the, the most high. And this guy, Haman or Haman is like fucking Haman. pissed. And he goes, yo, <laughs> we he's gotta kill. Family. He goes, oh. he go. he sees that Mordecai doesn't bow and he goes to the king. He goes, yo, every Jew out. We're oh, killing him. Fair, every yeah. single oh. Jew. Killed no. every single Jew, and so that tends to be an issue for you guys. <laughs> like, Connor, really I'm does. like sensing a pattern. <laughs> um, and I'm sorry, I had skipped one part of the story. Mordecai, years prior, had seen two guys who were conspiring to kill the king, but Mordecai That's killed not those. Not Rose. Yes, oh, Mort so Mordecai the Jew, yes. like basically saved the king's life, but that was it. Just like he's the king, of course you're going to save his life. But right. when in the record books, no one talked about it.
So time goes on, the decree is out there, they're going to start rounding up all the Jews. And then Esther's like, hey, can I talk to you for a second? Like, king. And he's like, sure, whatever you want. If you want half the kingdom, it's yours. You're my bae. Like, I got you. Mm -hmm. And she's like, there's a decree and they're going to kill everyone that's Jewish. And she and the king's like, absolutely not. And he's like, well, who's who who's Jewish? And she says, I'm Jewish. And also, we just got to not do this anymore. So she's like, OK. And then that night he can't sleep. And so he tells his people to like open up the book of records and is like, tell me a story from the book. And they're like, oh, here's a story. There was a Jew, Mordecai, who saved your life one time. And he goes, and what did we do for this guy? And they were like, we didn't do shit for him. We just, it just, and he's like, okay, let me call in someone for some idea. So they call in Haman, the ideas that the, the evil oh, guy no. to kill the Jews. Uh -huh. uh -oh. They call him in and he's so excited because he's getting a fucking meeting with the king. And he goes to the king and he's like, what's we up? Need a, we need a fun thing to do for the Jewish people. Well, no. So he didn't say for the Jewish people. He just uh -oh. goes, what would you do if you wanted to honor someone in the whole kingdom? And Haman's thinking like, oh, dude, I'm the guy that came with the idea for killing all the Jews. This is going to be honoring me. And he's like, well, if you want to honor, stupid. he's like, if you want to honor someone, give him all the king's clothes. Wow. Him wear all the king's clothes. Uh -huh. Put clothes. him on a horse, parade him through town and say, this is like the guy that we want to honor. And he's Haman is like telling the king all these things right. that he is going to happen to him. And the king goes, all right, all that shit you just told me, go do it to that Jew, Mordecai, that didn't bow down to you. And he gets so fucking pissed. And Mordecai gets the parade. And then Haman gets killed uh, because he was conspiring against the, the Jewish people. And who kills him? Uh, I, I don't know. I think it was like the court, like the, the, the kingdom decided right. to kill him. And so that's just we celebrate another holiday of getting out of a jam. So we just drink a lot of booze to, I don't know why, but it's the one holiday where you're supposed to get so fucked up that you don't know the difference between the good guy and the bad guy. And I don't oh, know why we wear costumes, that. but it's just like a party. Do you get to pick your costume? Yeah, yeah. You wear whatever you want. You can be a Power Ranger. Yeah, anything you want. There's no, I think it's like, I, I, I truly don't know why we dress up. But like, if you go to Jewish communities, it's an insane day. Like there's accounts in New York that will like go and film the Jews on Purim. Because it's like a bunch of orthodox rabbis like with face paint on, shit face out of their minds. And they're just the happiest they could ever be. Most Jewish holidays are just us surviving people that tried to kill us. And this is just another one. What and then is the way at Purim. So where did the Hamantaschen come from? Uh, because we were in a jam. Well, no. And there's jam in it. I've been waiting to say that. That's really good. He <laughs> just, apparently his fit in the day was wearing a triangle hat. Uh, and so he just kind of like. Wore. Do you know what those are? The Hamantaschen little triangle thing? Yeah, of course. Okay. Do you really? Yeah, no. <laughs> Sorry, I went on a little bit of a tangent there. Wait, no, that is Purim. It I think it just passed, passed. A few weeks ago. Because I oh, always get in my Snapchat no. memories in college, the rabbi at Hillel got like so fucked up to the point of like, I have like hospitalization maybe. And it always comes up in my Snapchat memories of him just like falling over. Um, well, you guys know I love the Facebook group Brooke and Connor Make a Podcast. I love really you. Really you're you're, you're in it? Yeah. He's what well, I'll, I'll answer questions. <laughs> yeah, I didn't on, know like, that. I'll answer questions on y'all's behalf sometimes. Like someone was like, oh, has Brooke watched uh Under the Banner of Heaven? And I'm like, Yes. <laughs> Wait, <laughs> uh, aren't you like getting bombarded in that group? Don't no. you not much. Not no. much. I observe and I if I see an opportunity for me to answer something, I will. Wow. He's yeah. So so I'm like uh, I'm a moderator. Yeah, <laughs> like, like for, not really. But for me, I can't, are you at, are you? One? I need to make you one because I don't. I'm really horrible. But then if I'm a mod, that. that means I like I have like a whole new job now. No, like no, hey, no pressure. This is a no pressure situation. Are you mod him right now? What are the rules of? Uh, oh, the, you the posted Brooke. in there an hour ago. I did, and I <laughs> asked him a question. I asked him forty-seven about, comments back. About oh to, my God. It's an active community. Um, I asked uh, to have Brooke and Connor on my pod. Um anything you would like to ask them and they sent me a bunch a lot of questions wow. now that i'm looking at them that's a really good idea so uh, i'm going to ask you guys and we can keep these like really short if you don't like them you can just say the next question i'm cool with it what's the worst big purchase you've ever made look to find big uh, well, I don't. Do you want me to ask Tori what? Uh, oh, uh, okay. To Maybe let's go by I feel like I just make a lot of stupid small purchases, and the big ones like are more thoughtful, like a car. Mm -hmm. I thought that one through a little that, bit. That's a, that's pretty. That's a and I don't regret. Purchase. Yeah, car, laptop. Like I feel like those are my only like big purchases. Animal. She was twenty dollars. That's a big purchase. Oh yeah. Oh. That's true. I did not think that one through. <laughs> <laughs> I don't really buy stuff. That's not true. What do I buy? Tons of things from targeted Instagram ads. I bought my couch, yeah, from a targeted Instagram ad. 
that your mom refuses to sit on no different couch but this one just the cushions don't come off so i do kind of regret that like i wish i would have uh, but couches are hard right couches are hard so i like kind of didn't i don't beat myself up too much about that but i don't really i definitely don't make any big purchases ever but okay. i don't make a ton of purchases in general I think like my biggest thing that I regret big purchases every weekend would be going to the bar with anyone in this room <laughs> and being like, I already opened a tab. <laughs> Just go ahead and run the tab because guess who's going to have to go back to that bar and get their credit card the next day and sign for like 11 people that bought drinks on it. Did you get your card back at the bed? Yeah. You did. Which was nice. Don't... I ordered a whole new one and I just left. Really? Left yeah. Well, I would have bought it for you. I said in the group chat, I said, Oh, Aaron already got one. mine maybe. I don't know. Well, Connor was like, can someone get mine? I said, uh -oh. please, me too. Um, just no, I, I grabbed mine and then, um, it's, I, it was nice having a weekend where I ended up with another card instead of minus one. Cause I, I, I mean, it was a Tuesday, I guess, but <laughs> it was nice. Wait, it was, you leave your card at these places. We all well, left it there. A lot accident. of, a lot of times when we get to a bar, like our group, yeah, we take over the bar and there's no one else there. But by the time we're all wrapping up, the bar is now packed. And so it's easier to just leave your card, accept the 20% tip, gratuity, and then come back and get it versus waiting in line to sign out for your check. You know, like, yeah, I, I there's no, I love the rush I get when they go, here's your card back. Yeah. And I'm like, hell yeah. When they go to that Rolodex in their last name and they go, oh, <laughs> <laughs> no, you're saying the next day you love the rush of getting it back. Yeah. No. Or oh. I just like not having uh, uh, to worry about it. Mm -hmm. I like getting my card back immediately on the that, spot that, and that, not, oh, them okay. it. not them keeping it. Not them keeping it. I never it. open a tab. I've never I, done that on purpose. Just, just keep giving your card. Well, it's, well, it's like, that's, do you only just... tip on the first time you use it or the last time you use it? You tip every time. It's going to equal Wait, the same you, amount. Oh, you say, right. you ask for your card back every, every time. Every drink, even yes. If you know that you're going to be at the bar for the next three hours. Yes. I usually do that too. Why? Because I don't want to have to worry about leave. Like, you guys are like, go, taking day trips to the next day to pick up your... No, the, the next time. weekend. I'll leave it for two weeks. And that's, fine. that's what I just did. I just picked it up. It had been there for two weeks. I left a card for 10 months at a bar. Did you go pick it up? Uh, well, it was my... Because they also had my ID tied to it as well. And so... I would always call the bar and go, hey, is my ID there? They would never answer, never would get back to me. And then I had my passport with me for a long time as my real ID. Oh. And then I did the whole, you know, went out to dinner with your parents. And they were like, all right, can I see an ID? And, you know, you show your passport in front of your mom. And your mom's like, where is your yeah. real ID? Uh -huh. And uh, uh, I was like, oh, I left it in L.A. But then there was a reason why I really needed my real ID for something. And I was like, fine, you know what? Screw it. One day I went back to the bar. I went up to the bartender and I said, hey, I left my ID here like a couple weeks ago. Can I pick it up? She was like, yeah, for sure. Sure enough, the receipt was tied in. She goes, you said a couple weeks ago? <laughs> 10 months? She was like, it's been 10 months. That's a dude. year. <laughs> That's a year. <laughs> yeah. I was so embarrassed, but I got it back. And you never opened a new card? Like no, the ID, I did reopen up a new okay. card, but the, the ID. ID, but I had just left it oh, there. That's wow. why I needed to get in the, in the receipt was wrapped. Well, how would it. they have expected you to get back in the bar to get your wall or your card? If you didn't have a passport, like you wouldn't be able to get in if they had your ID. A good point. Well, I guess that's why I have my passport. Well, you're lucky. Also, you didn't get pulled over you're driving around without a license. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I know. A lot of people well, And I think it was because I had to find my ID because I did get pulled over it. and I had a ticket yes. and I said, I still have my license. And it's I just not on. Anyways. Yeah, okay. Sorry. All right. Brooke, would you rather never knit another sweater or go back to preschool teaching for two years? Damn. That's a good question for Brooke. That's a real tough one. It's from Madeline. Madeline. Madeline never knit another sweater. Cut. I th uh. okay so never knit another sweater ever yeah or go back to teach for two years but also it, it does specify in another sweater so you, maybe you could knit other things could i knit like a matching set tank and shorts you know what i think you can yeah then i would rather never never knit another sweater mm. you, you don't mean you could last two more two years as a preschool you can I still don't. make tiktoks no I, could, I don't think i could make it truly you don't think you would survive or, or would you be allowed to i saying? think that that would be two years of my life like in my prime where I'd be really depressed. And then Even if you got to keep doing the pod and you got to keep yeah. getting in. Like yeah. you, we're a preschool teacher here in LA. Like I, some, like, you just have no social life. You are like completely drained every single day. Like mm. I would literally have to go to bed at seven. Yeah, that's true. 
No more Barney's Beanery. Yeah, I just would like. It's not worth it, unfortunately. Okay, that makes sense. But I would, I would, I <laughs> would, if I teach, uh, would or could either of them do hot ones? Could they take the heat? No, I could. You could. Have you ever? Brooke's seen how much sriracha I eat. I eat like, I know it's not like the hottest thing in the world, but like I load it up. Have you, but have you gone to a hotter level of spice? Have yeah. you done, have you done the hot sauce hosses, the hot, the hot, the hot, the hot, hot one sauces? Sauce. Have you tried them? No, I have it. Like I think we have some here. I think dude, I could go pretty far with it. I, dude, it'll ruin your day. Da bomb. Well, yeah, I was gonna say I can't do it today. But... I've done da bomb. I I was out of commission for like four I hours. Oh, I, I don't know how. I'm so sorry. Do it. Removing the. Lid. I one time. You know when sometimes you get like yeah. Uh, it's Thai food, and they'll have like those peppers that like you're yeah. not supposed to eat, but if you bite into them, it's just like. Mm-hmm. I've been into one of those. It ruined my day, and I cannot. <laughs> 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 You guys go ahead. I'm just going to stay in tonight. <laughs> Sorry. I'm just I, I don't. I have a theory that some of these celebrities on Hot Ones are not actually doing. I, I don't have this whole thing with Hot Ones. Okay. I uh, the interview, occasionally they, watch. Are... Okay, go on. No, no, no. I, I I'll occasionally. Oh, okay, Hot Ones. My whole thing with Hot Ones, I'll occasionally watch an episode where it's a celebrity I like. I'll be like, yeah. all right, I'll watch a few Hot Ones. Yeah. Who are the people who are watching Hot Ones every freaking week? I think that's people cool. like Sean Evans. The, people do like Sean he's Evans. Great, I love Sean Evans. But they like he meets Squirm too. See, I don't think I that just, he's that great. I, like, I don't I, dislike him. I just think that like he's the right person there that can keep it moving in a very so that the this is what he's good at. He has enough rebound to let the other person that's there shine. The, yes. He's not there to be the celebrity. Right. He's there to provide them like an outlet to, for them to yeah, have he's, the, he's the not spotlight. Conan O'Brien star quality, like, I'm the star of the show. Like, oh, this is really, he's, right. he's, he's the host of the Oscars. He's not, he's there as like he, he, a sounding board. He's always asking a question that never has been asked, yes. nor any other interviewer would put in the homework to like figure out. He's like Nardwar, but yes. less, yeah. A, I don't say Nardwar is obnoxious, but he's kind of like a glass of milk. That's what he is on the show. He also (laughs) humanizes the celebrities a lot. Like he doesn't glamorize them as like, so you're doing this big movie. Right. It's very human. He's never starstruck. I also, I like that thing. Mike, did you just say that you don't think that they're going all the way? I don't. Okay. It is way too valuable of an interview spot for him to be giving Megan the stallion, a hot, hot, hot wing. Right away, because like, <laughs> she, like that's a very valuable they, half hour for her, they like, work and, and for it. his show. Uh, but here's okay. Here's the theory that I have, because they used to do this thing where they would call it the wall of shame, where like you get four in and the celebrity would be like, "Fuck this, I'm not doing this anymore," and they would leave it in the show, and like you get four wings in, and the fourth wing, they're like, "This is too hot." But they would continue the interview. Who but... was the worst? It was T Pain. T Pain. No, no, it's oh no, DJ Khaled. Yes, DJ Khaled was out on like the third wing, and he was like, "I'm not." eating anymore but they continued the interview and they did the wall of shame and they there was an interview with sean where they said we stopped doing the wall of shame because it created hate and we don't want to create like a hate for our fan base but there's still people who are definitely tapping out they just don't show that anymore i think they just cut it out and they'll probably repeat the same wing that they ended on but if they're like i can't do this anymore they're just going to eat like the first win and call it the hot one i think like hot ones fans are like a little Psycho, or just like, oh yeah, did you see the last one with the guy to the third pepper? <laughs> oh, like if they watch it every episode, you've seen it. You're so familiar with it. Like yeah. people are wearing like hot ones birch. Well, like you, we're like it's a fun. It has to be a little boring. Like no, the, but like, he's such a good interviewer, and it's also interesting to see. I think that's the whole premise of the show. You see celebrities in an uncomfortable situation. Yes, I think it's a great vehicle. Definitely but, like, humanizes consistent people. Like you yeah. have to have for him to have growth on the show, just like Amelia. Amelia chicken chop day yeah like you have to have people that are fans of the host or else it's just gonna be consistent spikes you have shania twain on right spike you have shania twain, <laughs> shania she twain. Oh, that yeah. chicken chop who, yeah who else does she have on chicken chop yeah maddie like, Healy. spike you have maddie Healy. jack but harlow it, there would be drop-offs after her show yeah and she wouldn't have any fans and she has so many fans because she's I like she's funny on that yeah. but she, i connor I would I would suggest trying like uh, one of the ones further down the line. Not the bomb. bomb. No, not the bomb because the bomb is like notoriously fucking terrible. But they do that on the show. It, that's the one I would that would fuck me up. If I was on I like the show. way Jeff Goldblum did it. He literally would just go like, like <laughs> the tiniest, wow. tiniest little Squirt body. Birdie, that probably would yeah. 
Okay. I tap out at Sriracha for sure. I love Sriracha. Uh, What's your favorite high snack? Oh my God. Last night, there was this video. I I smoked a little bit last night. And there was the video of, you know, like Ian, of formerly Chris and Ian. Why are you pointing at your eyes like that? Do you good? Yeah, I do. I'm going to one stop. Is this the allergies or like a lack of sleep? It's lack of sleep. Yeah. He Anyway, he was diving into this cinnamon <laughs> bun. And it was like 1130. And at this point, I'm on GoPuff, like typing in cinnamon bun. I'm on like Instacart. And they like, Ooh. there was no just like hot cinnamon bun available to me at 1126 p.m. You throw it in the microwave. But. I like couldn't even think like pop. Like, yeah. like, <laughs> like I couldn't McDonald's like I needed cinnamon. like a hot one to come to my door. But that would be my dream high snack. Would be a, a cinnamon. Bun. That's the thing a lot of people don't think about with like junk food and snacks. Like you can go and get a box of Chips Ahoy cookies and they're fine. But if you throw like a few cookies in the microwave for like four seconds, it's like it just came out of the oven. And even if they're not chewy soft, cinnamon the same thing. There's like they're like not that great in the plastic mm. wrap. Little Isn't microwave, like a, a little microwave, a little air fryer. Have you no, ever had no, those no, no. mini cinnamon rolls from Wouldn't Whole Foods? Wouldn't make it like a little air fryer oh, would take too long? Oh it would God. take too long. Those air fryer is pretty I damn quick. The air, the point of the microwave is it's three seconds. You're not cooking it. You're just. I know, but don't you want like a little? It's like a different hot. Maybe I'm totally wrong. It's on okay. This. It's okay. okay. I think What's mine next? would be nachos. Because I don't like a food where like I'm eating it and then when I eat it I'm done. I like to have a little bit of adventures. Mm-hmm. I'm like when that you get those things for your dogs where you put their food in like a puzzle <laughs> so that it keeps them busy for a while. Yeah. Like I I'm like fully into that idea. <laughs> yeah. Because I don't want to eat too bad. I don't want it to be over. Like the best part of my day is when I am like excited for what I'm about to eat. And the worst part of my day is when I'm either full, which is so privileged to say. That's that's or uh, when yeah. my food's done. Mm-hmm. I've had times where I'm like my food, I'm getting really full, or my food's done, and I, I take a little bit of an edible, so I'll get hungry. Again. Right now, so I, I do that too eating. sometimes. That's and good, then ice cream. It's a good life chocolate philosophy. chip cookie dough ice cream. It's a really good life philosophy. Yeah. Understanding that the anticipation of the thing is a- almost better than the thing itself. Oh. Yeah. It leads to a lot more happiness. I agree. I would also need chips, like sour cream and onion chips or cheeses Ooh. after the cinnamon bun. Have you not Trader Joe's? And that cinnamon bun again. Oh <gasps> yes. Yes. All right. Wait, are right. those I, unbelievable? I had those last The chili week. lime thing? Yeah. Wait. Yes. Uh, oh, wait. The Trader Joe's? Yes. I'm not a fan. I don't like those okay, either. Okay. Don't, don't, don't yuck our young. What's, let's oh my this. God. We have them here. I've never, them I've never here. had Takis. I've never had Takis. Takis aren't that great. And then I had those because they were spicy. just out at my parents' house. And I was like, <laughs> oh my God. What? It's unbelievable. You can't How can nobody have told me about these? <laughs> I was kind of mad. I was like, whoa, the shit. The lime is a little intense on me. Yeah, I don't think much so. flavor. Connor, Connor, fuck this. It's summertime, you're sitting by a pool. Oh, Got a little beer, Topo Chico. Have those. Sun, sweating. You got the heat. There is not a better combination. What would you dip those in? Nothing. You don't need to. They're perfect. They did. They did. I, I did. I can hummus. ranch. A plain hummus. <laughs> yeah. Oh, a yeah. A plain hummus. That could work, but I don't think they need to be dipped. I think that they're a ranch. Yeah. No, I don't think they do either. But I think they need it. Yeah. Dip, oh, my sure. God. They would be actually really good in the hummus from the Melrose Farmer's Market. Oh, oh. yeah. Because that is just like so smooth and. Oh. Ooh. Oh, or the whipped eggplant from oh, Elefante. Oh, God. No, oh, that is unbelievable. It is unbelievable. The eggplant? I think that's that. Oh, my God. Do, do you guys know about the ugly section, good looking section thing at Elefante? I've heard no, about this. That curb Tato. What is it? Tiato. Tiato. Yes, but I believe it's based on Elefante. No way. Where's the ugly section? Is it right when you walk in? Yeah. I've never sat there. <laughs> I've never sat in that area. And every time I walk in, I'm like, they always put me in the sunset room. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. This is my theory. That it's, oh it's, my god. Oh, we're the hot ones. We're hot ones, right? Oh, the, we sat in the sunroom, right? That is that where? Yeah. We're the that's hot like ones, I've yeah. only sat right next to the elevator. Wow. Uh, that's. I think that Larry got the idea from Elefante. I had no idea that was possibly t- based on a real just kind of take a look at the people. I'm well, it's, go right now. It's what? interesting because that is also where they have to put large parties because right. that's the only place where the, there's big enough tables. But I've never, I've never really looked, and now I'm going yeah, to. Yeah, me too. I wouldn't know because I'm in the sunset <laughs> room. <laughs> it's just a theory. I don't. Wow. Know. But the idea for those who don't know is that there is an ugly section at the, in the restaurant and a hot section, and they will seat you in the section where you most belong. But none I have of us no here. Idea. Yeah. I've been sat in the ugly section once, which is how I know. Really? 
Who were you with? Yeah, I was going to say it kind of also depends on the company. Yeah, someone else can drag you down with it. Yeah. Uh, no, I was definitely the one dragging. We're dragging. I was with Greta and I was wearing oh. like sweatpants and a t shirt. Oh. And she was like dressed up from like an office, like work. It could vibe. be clothing there too. It could definitely be clothing. I think it's clothing. Because on the West Side, there's a bunch of fashionistas that are fuggo. <laughs> <laughs> but their clothes are A1. Right. Um, so I've sat in the elegant section once, but. Uh, this one has like a lot of likes. Is one touch all it takes? Oh. What is yes. it? One kiss is all it takes? No, it's, no, it's one touch. It's one touch all it takes. What is this? One, yeah, well, one touch is it, really it's all, all it takes. It takes. For Can what? you elaborate? For it. For it to, you know. To, yeah. to, ta to take. One touch is all it takes at this time. What are we ta uh, talking about? So, well, moving forward, it's important, like, in practice. So, to, like, put into practice and mm -hmm. kind of, like, Going through the from a day to day yeah. motion perspective. Mm hmm. You really only need the one touch. The this is a fun day. card. This is a cut. I don't know. At the end of the day. Are we going to get any elaboration on there this? There is or? none. There, it just started like that, and it's just... So one touch is all it takes. It's all it takes. Yeah. Will it ever take more than no. one touch? No. Thanks for asking. No, it won't. I can't see it. I can't see that happening. <laughs> uh-uh. Not wanna, in our lifetime. I don't want to rule it out, but it's not something no, that we'll ever no. experience. Not in the foreseeable future. <laughs> not, from the, God, no. not, not from the sunset. Right? Is it possible uh -huh. that no touches would be what it takes? No, it really is... All when it comes down to it, one. It's just one touch, touch. all it takes. It reminds me, the other day, I also had had a, a little bit of weed. I was just sitting there and I was just thinking about Dua Lipa and about how, like, if I ever meet her, like, I think that I would leave there changed in a, in the same way that, like, a Gandhi mm -hmm. would leave. The... Didn't you just tweet something about that? I said if I met Dua Lipa, I think I would get powers. Uh-huh. Uh, you know that I... <laughs> and I don't know, like, I can't explain, but she was right. Like, one touch is... I, all, and all it takes. I have met and had a conversation with her. Do where? You have I don't believe it, but where? Uh, we landed in Mexico City. Okay. Like a year and a half ago, like me and my New York friends went to Mexico City, and this guy, it's like we're all waiting at the airport for our like ch charter bus or whatever, like the bus to the hotel. This guy comes up and goes, "Hey, do you guys have a lighter? I'm just trying to smoke the cigarette." That's how it always starts and, with those people. <laughs> and none of none of us had a lighter, but uh, when he left, the girl was like, "That's." Uh, Hadid, the the brother. Anwar. Yeah, and then he walked back to his party, and it was Dua Lipa. And I'm like, huh, gotta find a lighter. This is my moment. Uh huh. Yeah. Um, so I didn't have a lighter, but I also know that I have a mutual friend with Dua Lipa, and I texted to confirm. I was like, hey, do you know Dua Lipa? Like, if I bring you up, will she know who you are? And I, she was like, yeah. Oh my god, say hi for me. So I'm like, all right, here's my chance. I walked up and I go, hey, I actually don't have a lighter, but I would love a cigarette. So if you find a lighter. Like, let me know. They're like, oh, we actually did find a lighter. Here's a cigarette. Oh, and yeah. She he, bought this cig. I'm yeah. Dual, dual yep. yep. And then uh, she, I was just like, so, was you know. Was she smoking? No, she wasn't. It was just the guy. Um, oh, I didn't no. even light it up. I just I just took the cigarette. I didn't even light it up. I was just like, let me get this moment. And I was like, do you know. <laughs> <Mike the th> <laughs> <laughs> I just said, do you know X, Y, Z person? She's like, oh, my God. Yeah, I love her. Tell her I said hi. I was like, yeah, cool. Small world. What are you guys up to? She's like, we're just here for a little vacation. I was like, me too. And just kind of like, you know, very like casual one-on-one conversation. And then I was like, all right, well, I'll head out. Nice yeah. to meet you. Wow. And that was it. She That's is. Powerful. Yes. Stunning like, person. I have my set that I have. Oh, um, yeah. You have to write it. I'm shitting my pants about this one. This one's really scaring me. Good. You're writing a new set for tonight? Okay. I have like half of them. I have like half of it done. Why, I don't know why you keep rewriting different sets for each performance. I took some stuff out. But that's for you. Just keep polishing. What'd you take That's out? Like just your polishing. What did and you editing. Do you have friends going tonight? Like, are people that it's, you know? It's, it's tomorrow night. Oh. But we just have the podcast tomorrow, and it goes until, like, right up until I need to go, because it's mm -hmm. so freaking far away. But Will you have, like, people that you know in the audience, though, to, like... My manager. But you won't have, like, the boys or the girls mm -hmm. that your friends... It was with, a like... really small venue, and it sold out, like, immediately. Oh. I didn't even know what the ticket, when the tickets were going to go. Tell everyone who you're opening for. Um, Opening for Bill Burr. That's fucking insane. Billy Burr? Bill Burr. It's really cool. Um, not like it's not like me and then Bill Burr, but like I'm I'm going on before him. Your name is on the same mm -hmm. on the poster. Yeah, yeah. yeah. like yeah. a centimeter away on the poster. You're really at like cool. four p.m. He's at like eleven. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a festival. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like on the, this is what people say it like the band that got their first time at ACL. <laughs> they're like on the small stage on Friday and they're saying they're opening for the the closer on Sunday. That's not a lie. Uh uh. Hey, you saw on the poster with right. them. This is just like. Not a long show, and a small room, and it's me. 
two more people, and then Bill Burr. That's so sick. And That's then dope. special guests, which the, I'll have already done it by the time, but I, apparently, I think it's Tiffany Haddish. Fair. Oh, hell yeah. Person. That's cool. Uh, Brooke, or no, Connor. Uh, yeah? <laughs> Hannah wants to know, does Connor have any ethical clout-chasing trademark fail stories? Fail? Ethical trademark. Fail. Tra- fail. Is, yeah, fail stories. Oh, like what's, fail, what's ethical fail. clout chasing? That's, fail stories. I don't well, know. ethical clout chasing is this the thing that I do where kind of like what Mike was just saying, I'm gonna I have a plan in place. I'm not gonna go and be like, Oh my god, can I get a picture? It never works. Play it very cool. This isn't this isn't life or death for me either. And crickets? Like genuinely? Zane's probably on this Snapchat. Oh, like, okay. Um Sorry, continue. Sorry, um, please. It's just it's it's like what you did, where you had a strategy in place. You go, but also I'm going to go up. A key is you don't pretend like you don't know the person because that's like a douchebag move. Yeah, not like, no, no, no. Like you're not like, oh, hey, what's your name? Yeah, I have done that when they've introduced themselves to me. Not like, oh, I'm sorry, I didn't get that. Like right. meeting Cole Sprouse, I wasn't like Dylan. You met Dylan. Dylan, I'm, I'm not like <laughs> I'm not like oh oh my god, I'm like a huge fan. Like yeah. great to meet you. I'm just like oh hey Connor. Yeah, I'm like Dylan or like vice versa. But, like, um, well, I did it once. I was with Brittany Broski at Stagecoach, and she has her fold-out chair. And she's like, we're just, like, kind of sitting there in the front for Midland. And they are coming out. And in front of us is Ashton Kutcher and Mila Kunis. Like, it's, it's like, VIP. So it's just, they're just standing there, obviously. Like, I'm like, oh, I'm going to, like, go say hi. I'm a huge Mila Kunis fan as well as Ashton Kutcher. I've always loved Ashton Kutcher. Mm-hmm. So I just like walked up and I was like, hey, um, I can't remember what I said to him, but it just didn't work. Oh, he and didn't, he didn't no, take the bait. He, he also was just like not really bubbly. Mm-hmm. Even though like we're at a festival and we're also waiting for the person to come on. Yep. It's definitely like a very mingly point in the VIP. Right. You're not interrupting him from like, no. And he wasn't on, he's not honest. He's just literally looking around like, yeah. You know, did he have um, like a mask or anything? No. Oh no. No. We took a picture together, but yeah, we took the picture and then I was like, Oh, can, for one, can we just like act like we've been buddies for four years? Like, you know, and I always say that because like once you break down the walls, they're like, yeah, yeah. Like it's just, but usually ends up, that's usually like a funny thing to ask him because like usually it's just, Lame, you know, yeah. I'd be like, can I get a photo? Smile. Oh, it's like a little too stiff. Tried to chat, said I was a big fan of Acorns, his investment app, um, which I was. And then Mila is just staring at me. Oh boy, like daggers. And we take a photo. I'm like, can we do one of like we're boys? And he was like, okay. Mm, and we took it. He did the exact same thing, and I was like, thanks. Uh, it was just like, oh, it's just like flop. But like there, I don't even feel embarrassed about it because it's like. That was, like, lame of him. But it happens, too. Like, you he, never know. He could have just gotten a text that one of his companies went under or, like, yeah, you know, just having a oh, bad day. He's concerned once he starts with one person oh, and takes a pin, it could just start building up. Yeah. Like, and he's yeah. just, like, trying to enjoy himself and his own time. Yeah. Totally. And, uh, I think was just being cautious about that. Yeah, I mean... You know that. Can we hear a success story now to sort of... The Matthew one is the biggest success. Like, the button thing was insane. Oh, the yeah. The Matthew Gregoobler. Oh, I, I You were there. Yes. Like, it was, that was, like, art. I presume you guys have spoken about this before? The, well, that was that was, that was was after this. I seriously think that each time I do this, it gets better because I think it's like what you said on the podcast the other day. Like, the more that we're in these situations with, like, people that two years ago I, you would not you have fathom. ever, ever uh-huh. fathom that, yeah, you'd even be in the same block, square block, you know? Now you're at a premiere and walking the carpet right before Matthew. Hey, Gluber, it's it, Gluber, <laughs> Gluber, Gluber, hey, Gluber, Gluber. It's right in front of Gluber McGee. Um, anyways, I had texted Patricia and I was like, because Matt and Patricia weren't at the event yet. And I was like, hey, can you bring a safety pin? My pants were being, oh, I wasn't wearing a belt. Right. My pants were like falling down. And so she brought me two safety pins. I, she safety pinned my pants. And then from behind, Matthew Great Gubler got there and Brooke hit me on the arm so hard. And I was like, look behind you, blah, blah, blah. I like, you know, it's probably one of those things where it's like you're getting a little bit desensitized because you're around these people all the time. And it's like, I don't need to really do anything. You want to act normal like you've been there before. But then his button, he was missing a button on his thing. And I was like, hey, I, I have this extra safety pin if you want it. Like you could. And he's like, dude, thank you so much. Seriously, like you just like saved my life. And we're talking. And I was like, I also have Tums. 
<laughs> I guess you're seven grade. <laughs> and we were just chatting for a second, and I can hear in the background Brooke going, Connor! Connor! Uh, Connor! <laughs> and like, she's like yelling at me. I'm like, oh, like you have to meet my friend Brooke. And then that was I the, just, I mean, like, the rest I of the history. I have never gone up to anyone on my own. Like, I can't. It's just no I harm. Can't. It's no harm, no foul to them. There is harm for me. Right. Because, like, I'd rather them not know me at all than to know me and, like, think I'm anything less than the most perfect person well, they've ever experienced. Surely you you watched Daisy Jones in The Six. Surely. Yeah. So did you see in, like, the first episode when What's-His-Face goes up to What's-His-Face and he's like, you need to hear my band. <laughs> right. He either, the worst they could say is no. As long uh, as yeah, you're like. Yeah, that to me, like, is bad. See, I don't care because I'm going to wake up tomorrow in my bed and then just do the same day over again. Yeah, you still get to be you. And I yeah. fi- but I fixed, like, I, it will not leave my head. And they have, like, 100,000 interactions probably, like, every day from walking to get a coffee to, like, yeah. you know. It's just, like, hard for me because I am such, as you might know, like, it's such an intense fan of some of these people. Yeah. To, like, have yeah. them just, like, not think I'm, like, the most... Like incredible. amazing, incredible person. But, like I'd rather have a zero interaction. Yeah, with and if they don't see that in their interaction with you, I think that's more of a reflection of where they're at in their day, and not about who you are as a person. Because your real friends know how great mm-hmm. you are, and if it if a celebrity doesn't see that, that's on them. Well, they're not gonna because what like there's nothing I can do. I so say, I just would rather not go up to them. I will say none of my ethical clout chasing moves have been on someone that I'm in, like an actual right. fan of. Right. Oh right. So that's the only people I'm terrified of. Who really. is the someone you're an actual fan of? Actual. Um, you probably know, like, Jennifer Lawrence. Kate Hudson. Kate Hudson. I guess I'm a fan of Matthew McConaughey. I, like, have bitterness towards him for some for some reason that I can't figure out, but that's, like, a therapy topic. I just don't even know what I would talk to him about. I Matthew McConaughey, there's just something about it where, like, I, I could... It's... Love you at failure to launch. Yeah. <laughs> what about, like, a musician? Oh. Like Tom Mish or something. Yeah, oh my god, it's so funny. Yeah, Tom Mish, I'd probably be, but no, but even then I'd be like, I wouldn't be like shaking and like, oh my God, that's, I'd be like, I'm a huge fan. You wouldn't love get the shakes for anyone? Yeah, who would make you like? You kind of got the shakes for Alexander Daddario. Well, that was like, I didn't know that was going to happen. I, like seeing her in person and like, she was like a theory doll. Like, yeah. I don't, I don't know. I don't know. That was the that. most like unsettled I've ever seen Connor for sure. Well, because it was like, she's right there. She knows who we are. Like her team invited us to an event that she was the the main the star of, and yeah. it was like we are. It was more about the opportunity for something bigger, which. But I was like, oh, we have to make this. We have to initiate this now. Like yeah. this is like this has all been laid out. This is one of those things where I look at other people like a Brittany Broskin. I'm like she and she takes advantage of situations that she's in. Yeah, way more so even from like a content perspective. We're like she's gonna make a get, get a video out of each one of these things so she always has like a friend with her that mm-hmm. like doesn't care about the situation and is filming from here you yeah. know how she always <laughs> has those videos of whoever else like one of her friends that's not online that's, right that is just getting the entire thing on camera so she doesn't ever worry about like oh i need my phone i need to film this video i need to get this or that she's always got like some someone filming mm-hmm. but that was the moment there where i was like no like i'm not gonna sit down and be cool she knows who we are. We're both in her bio on TikTok. What? Like, we have to say... Uh, yeah, you didn't know this? You're in her bio on TikTok? Yeah. What does it say? Like, fans of Brooke and Connor? Yeah. yeah. Well, basically... Whoa, they used to have David Dobrik, but she took it off. Oh, really? She took him... It was like, <clears throat> Connor Wood and David Dobrik fan account for a Whoa. while. For yeah. like, right... Like, for like a year and a half during the pandemic, and I... And I knew who she was, but like she's it's, like the the actress, like the blue eyes, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. But she's always been someone that's <laughs> yes. so famous to me that like I wouldn't even seek out to follow on Instagram. I'm like that is like that's like is um, she like a Jason Momoa? Yeah, she's on yeah. Uh, she's on White Lotus season one. I mean, yeah, she's pretty popular right now. Like when this is when we were first like becoming friends. <laughs> yeah. I saw that and like I had to text you immediately, and you already knew, but I was just like. You have to take advantage of this. Well, I, I thought <laughs> I thought like Connor was going like to date her. Like this was oh, gonna wow. like how old is she? Is she like our age? In now? my family. She's, she's married. married. Yeah. Oh, she's married. Well, she's yeah. not married. Yes. But like I was like, you have to take well, advantage of this. For a little bit at the time. Cause I didn't like I said, she was so famous and I was like, 
Oh, this is like an un- you know, yeah, and then unattainable. Like, and then she, it's like Barack Obama. She had like, called me. Not... And I like, but that's not someone, you know. Like I don't, I wouldn't go seek out The Rock or, right, or like Jason right. Momoa on TikTok because like, what? But like, if they followed me, I'd follow them back and be yeah. like, wow, like I have like a direct line to yeah. like the president now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I like, uh, like follow her back. We talked for like randomly about whatever, and then yeah, she took me and David out, and we talked about it on our podcast. Mm-hmm. I'm like, this is the worst day of my life. <laughs> Senator Dario has, <laughs> has, re- has removed me from her oh, bio. No. And I somehow, like, l- someone listened to it and told her, and then it was, fan- like, uh, Connor Wooden Brooke Averick fan account. Now it is. Wow. Oh, so it came out of the podcast. And then she made a TikTok about us. Oh, I forgot. Oh <laughs> so the, you... ni- the night that we meet her... We go to the after party and we had a couple of drinks, like nothing crazy. We had like three whatever drinks, but we were like being. What and party was this? Or what night was this? This was after her premiere of her show, um, the Mayfair Witches. The Mayfair Witches one. Oh, I was in. Wait, what? But what? This was this event at which? Where was it? It was, it was a like a small screening, and yeah, then... there was some screen. It was some event though. I got invited to, but I didn't go to it. And then uh, this whole thing happened. It could have been very yeah, jealous. It could have been could... that because it was definitely. It was at the it was at the Roosevelt. Oh, it was cool. at the Hollywood Roosevelt. It's but bit. yeah, but we were being hysterical. Like I literally was, everything Brooke was doing. Like uh, Lisa Renna was there, and Brooke was like, "Where's Lisa Renna?" And Lisa Renna was an inch from Brooke's head, <laughs> and went like this. It was like I was just like, "This is the, the." It was like the weirdest, funniest night. And then I was so chill with her because like I like low stakes for me. Like I yeah, like yeah. Mm-hmm. But I, anyways, we talked to her for a little bit and then met her like old roommate and we all hit it off really well. And then we're at home. It's like one in the morning and <laughs> I'm on the phone with Brooke and Brooke goes, Connor, check your TikTok. It was like Alexander Dario mentioned you in a video. <laughs> and it's her and her, her roommate, her old roommate. Like, I couldn't tell if they were being goofy or they were drunk too. <laughs> well, I think they were pretty drunk. <laughs> but they were being hysterical her friends like do not post this do not post and it cuts off and then it was posted but it was just like we met two of our favorite people brooke and connor tonight and it was like lady it was like why it, it was what was it lady zach or like La- no it was lady zach afron <laughs> i have to get in the air with her about that because i think they dated yeah did they i don't know but they were in baywatch together like she was his leading lady yeah oh that's right we just like, the, just like the most <laughs> random, funny. That's the that's one of those like weird things that happens from the internet where you're like, now we are like, you know, like I would I would see them somewhere and we would say hi to each other. You know, it's like crazy. Yeah, it's no longer an ethical cloud chase. It's no, just being right. But that's the only scenario that it's happened where like it's it's started on the internet and now like I, it's worked out in a like a longer term situation. Most of those ethical ch- cloud chasing things like <laughs> are are one offs. One and done. Like, uh, Thank you, ma'am. Oh, I'll tell you one that was funny at Coachella that I posted. Um, KJ Appa. That was one at Coachella. Oh, yes. But Who? It, it was... KJ Appa, our chief of Riverdale. Ah, uh, it's okay. That's okay. Sorry. The red-haired one. Remember. He was um, he was there, and I was like, hey, like, how are you doing? <laughs> He's like, I'm good. And I'm like, oh, like, I haven't seen you since Thanksgiving. And he was like, oh, my God, mate. It's been ages. And he's Australian. So Wait, I don't know why never, I did it. You had never met him before? No. And you, I, you, you said, said this see you this Thanksgiving. It just like popped into my head. So I said it. Good line. And That's he's really like, but, and it, he was like, oh my God, it's been ages. Like whatever. And I was like, oh, it's so good to see you again. Anyways. And then I was like, I think I need to get a photo. And I was like, do you mind if we get a photo? Really quick? Also, we didn't spend Thanksgiving together. I, I don't know why I said that. <laughs> and so then he starts laughing and then his friend takes photos. But it's funny because my buddy Sam Damecheck from here. Yeah. The, he knows all these people like really well. So like most of these people, I'm just like, oh, I'm like friends with Sam and they're, they like love Sam. Sam's so talented. So it like definitely gets the guard down, but I'm sure Sam is probably tired of me dropping his name with all these like, <laughs> hey, <let's do> <laughs> wow, that's a really good line. I've yeah. got to get into petty trouble. Since Thanksgiving. Michelle Obama. I haven't seen you since Thanksgiving. Ooh, that is good. Excuse me. <laughs> Cause it really gets good. there like their heart is like spinning. Could you have done that sober though? I was pretty sober. I think I had, one or two okay, drinks with zero before. drinks in your body could you go up to su- well, like a more yeah, definitely more than more different. so than if i was drunk really yeah like I, I don't think i'd go up to someone if i was 
if I like was aware of how drunk I was. Yeah, if you're like slosh, you're like, I don't want this interaction. I, I would literally be like, no, I don't yeah. want to. Sober, I could never talk to anyone ever and be fine. See, drunk me just does not care for even the like ethical clout chasing. But huh? smart enough to know that sober you will not like the interaction. Yeah, I'll just be, I'll be like, I don't even care to meet that person at mm-hmm. all. Like, I just don't care. Yeah. I lose all. Gary Vaynerchuk DM me the other day. What? Yep. Why? Gary V. Mm-hmm. Can you show us the DM? Mm-hmm. What do you say? He with my own said, eyes. He just said, "Like, keep going, Mike. I'm proud of you." Shut up. I, I've I've met him like a bunch of times throughout the years. I met him at South by Southwest when I was like 22, so like 10 years ago at this point. I met him in, like 2012, I think. And he's been super nice to me. Like, I, I, I'll see him at events, and he'll come up to me and uh-huh. remember me. And like, but when I lived in New York, I used to go to the Vayner Media offices and like hang out with them all the time. But I have not seen him in probably like five years, four years, just out of nowhere. And I, I've been following him forever. And I, at some point he followed me. I didn't know when. And I just woke up on like, I think it was like Saturday morning to a DM. And it just says like, keep, keep going, Mike. How cool. Wow. That's, That's awesome. That was a nice, yeah. That, and then I just said like, thanks so much. Wouldn't be where I am without you. And he was like, that makes me so happy. Wow. Don't drop in anything in between these cushions, by the way. Look, I pulled it out and I got like a full Oh my gosh. Wig. Ew. I think that's just someone's hair. I've been having so like, that'd be a full fake. Oh, no, I've been having a lot of like post meeting a celebrity anxiety. Like last Tuesday, it was Patricia's birthday. Happy birthday, Patricia! Happy, Happy birthday, birthday, baby! Patricia. Um, she's friends with Fabian. Fabian is on House of Dragons. Uh, and he's a nice guy. I met him before the show. Mm-hmm. I know he's like a big deal, and he was going to sh- show up to Patricia's party. And we we're like, "Ooh, this is exciting! That's yeah. awesome! Can't wait!" Um. Little did I know, he shows up like much later in the night. It's like 1.30 in the morning, and I'm hammered at this point. Oh, wait, where did he show up to? I was, Naughty Pig. You, I was with you. No, Connor, I think you had just left. Buddy, you missed this. It was like... Oh, I'm so glad I missed it. You don't know them. I know, but, I, I'm, no, but I'm glad. See, like that's, that's me being drunk. Like There was seven people at Naughty Pig. It was us, and we went to do karaoke, and... It hit a point where Leah was leaving, and she was like, "Cause she lives right by me." And she was like, "Do you want to just do an Uber together?" And I was like, "Yeah, that's smart." This is it was one of those moments though where like I wish you were still around though. Damn. Like even though I was I was doing well, uh, uh, cause like Fabian comes in and then he's like, "Hey, this is my buddy Matt." I look over and it's Matt. It's Matt. Smith. I gotta look. Oh, at that's he's like, alarming one. He's like, "Hey," and you're like, "Oh, hi, Matt. Matt, great name." Blah 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 blah. He's doc on Doctor Who, right? Or am I yes. someone else? Yes, yes, he is. Oh. Like he's big. Whoa, he, he that one, that gentleman. Yes. So he would scare me if I saw him. Yeah, that's, that's I scary. turned my uh, my uh, my face and I realized who I was looking at. Jump scare, <laughs> spooked me. And like he was... literally looks like an avatar. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode, Brooke Connor. Thank you for having us. Thank you so much for coming. You fun. guys know where they're at. You guys, you guys are return guests. You're great. You guys are the best. Anything you need and to you. plug? Want to plug? No. Um. No. Brooke and Connor make a podcast. They're both on TikTok and Instagram. They also have the TMG Studios channel. Wow. Um, where you can get bonus content. And uh, Lady Efron on TikTok, Fibula on TikTok. Also find them on Instagram. And just go give them a follow, give them some love, and watch Brooke and Connor make a podcast available on YouTube and wherever you get your podcasts. Nice. That's better than anything. That's a great wrap said, up. Yeah. We're, we usually go, all right. right. <laughs> <laughs> all right, you. We usually, we usually go, I got to pee. <laughs> Yeah. I do have that. We'll see you guys next week. See ya. I said it again. We did it again. (laughs)